It is execution-style slayings like this that police believe could be part of a war for control of the multi-million dollar cocaine trade here. On Saturday, a Colombian drug dealer, his wife and two babies were savagely gunned down. Police investigating the shooting found almost $15 million worth of cocaine in the man's apartment. Officials say that most cocaine comes from Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador, but it's refined in Colombia. From there, the drug makes its entry into the United States, usually via Florida, and any mode of transportation available is used to get it to New York. The Colombians have uh, settled in Queens, uh, primarily because they're, they're clannish, they like to live with one another, they like to socialize, and the uh, controlling aspects of the cocaine traffic here use Queens because that's where they live as their base of operation. Police say that in drug deals, the Colombians operate on trust, and when the trust is broken, they will kill readily. It's merely a, uh, a tight internal operation in which people that can no longer be trusted are eliminated. Officials say that they believe that the base of operations is here in the Jackson Heights section of Queens, but they also admit that even after the events of Saturday, that they don't expect the organization responsible to move too far away from here. When they uh, feel that they've been identified, they readily leave apartments, leaving all the furniture, and just move to another apartment house or another location. So we have no reason to believe that this event would cause them to abandon Jackson Heights uh, or Corona or any area that they're now operating in in Queens. It's hard to believe that a burlap wrapped bundle making its way across some mountains in South America could touch off a war in Queens, but that is what seems to have happened. Yesterday morning, 29-year-old Carmen Galvez, her four-month-old son, Damien, and her 18-month-old daughter, Dorothy, were killed by shotgun blasts as they sat in a Mercedes-Benz on the Grand Central Parkway. A man in the car, also killed, is believed to have been 32-year-old Orlando Galvez. But he was so badly shot up, identification is only tentative. The connection between them and the burlap bundle is called the Colombian Connection. When police went to the Galvez apartment in Jamaica Estates last night, they found $10 million worth of cocaine, over 100 pounds of it an arsenal of weapons, and one million dollars in cold, hard cash. Police officers, of course, are used to saying a lot of things in their line of work, a lot of things. But the size of the drugs and money that they found in this apartment stunned them. Yes, absolutely. It's the biggest uh, um, recovery of uh, drugs I've ever seen. While there is no definite proof linking the Galvezes to Colombia, Police believe that the evidence will eventually be found. Their apartment and the way they died all point to the flourishing drug trade between Columbia, Florida, and New York. This is the building where the victims lived, a very nice building with terraces and luxurious apartments in Jamaica Estates. This is the kind of building that the overwhelming majority of New Yorkers would like to live in. Well, the overwhelming majority of people who do live here were completely surprised. This building's changed a lot since I've been here. Does it surprise you that this was going on? Yeah. I mean, this is supposed to be a nice building, but um, evidently it's changed. It, it caught you by surprise? Yeah, I, found, I heard on the news last night. There were some rumors about it, but nobody really, nobody really knew anything more. Does it surprise you that that kind of thing is going yes, on in a neighborhood like did. this? To the, ex the, the uh, volume and the extent that it, it, it was, yes. Didn't think you had drug runners in your own no. neighborhood? No. I didn't know I lived in such an affluent neighborhood either. <laughs> Meantime, police say they are looking for a tall, thin black man who escaped in a green car after the shooting. But they admit he could be anywhere in the world by now. There is very little question that this was a professional job involving a professional hitman, and they are the hardest to find. Mark Haynes, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. In your mind, would the characterization of this as a drug war be accurate, or is this just revenge for some uh, double cross? Any answer I might give would be pure speculation. They have drug wars down in South Florida, Miami. We haven't had any here in New York.
Those are some of the original from Guinea. Okay. What's the weight of what's here? 307 pounds. There's 307 pounds and 14 and a half pounds of Demerol. Deloitte. Deloitte. I'm sorry, Deloitte. Deloitte. As an offshoot of this competing investigator subsequent Good afternoon. I'm probably not the fellow you want to take a picture of. Uh, my name is Andy Putra, and I'm the public information officer for the New York Office of the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, the, the guy that many of you were trying to uh, get through to this morning. Uh, I'd just like to introduce the, uh, the gentleman in back of me uh, who will be conducting Customs Service, Captain Paul Welling, the United States Coast Guard, and Captain Jim Englishby, the New York State Police, also a deputy chief of the uh, New York Drug Enforcement Task Force. And to uh, run today's press conference and present the release is uh, the successful results of a major narcotics investigation uh, conducted jointly by over 80 agents of the Drug Enforcement Administration, the United States Customs Service, the United States Coast Guard, and offices of the New York City Police Department, and the New York State Police, all working under the auspices of the President's Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. The investigation has resulted in the seizure of over 440 pounds of cocaine, the largest seizure of cocaine in recent memory in New York, and the arrest of seven traffickers responsible for importing this cocaine into the United States. And um, These arrests took place in the early, mor early morning hours of, uh, of today. It's interesting to note that the activities that we focused on began less than a week ago. Uh, ironically, perhaps on Thanksgiving morning. Over 300 pounds of cocaine and 14 and a half pounds of Demerol were discovered by the United States Customs Service Thanksgiving morning while conducting a search of the Anadrea, a boat which was then anchored off Staten Island in the Bay Ridge Anchorage area. The Anadrea is registered in Panama and it came into New York Harbor, uh, as you might expect, from Colombia and purported to carry with it a cargo of raw brown sugar. Uh, I might also note for you the participation of the Coast Guard, as I alluded a moment ago, which is part and parcel, as I'm sure most of you know, of the Vice President's National Narcotic Interdiction Border System. Um, they participated uh, initially in the investigation, and, as well as in the events that unfolded early this morning with the culminations of the arrests. Drug Enforcement Administration agents began following the discovery last Thanksgiving morning in response to the Customs report and investigation that revealed a series of individuals to whom this cocaine was destined, uh, many of whom reside in an address 48-50, 37th Street, Sunnyside section of Queens. Both the Drug Enforcement Administration and Customs we're familiar with this location as a result of a long-term investigation into Colombian cocaine trafficking, money laundering, the latter of which was believed to be taking place and evolving from time to time several institutions, financial institutions throughout the city of New York. For the last few days, DEA, Customs and the Coast Guard and local authorities 
working around the clock, as I'm sure you can appreciate, given the rather short period of time, describe in, in what is uniquely a magnificent, magnificent joint effort, successfully identified both the shippers and the recipients of the cocaine or the intended recipients of the cocaine and arranged to surveil the transfer of the drugs. Early this morning, in the vicinity of Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Harbor, agents watched as duffel bags containing much of the contraband you see before you were dropped by one of the defendants off the ship into the water where they were to be retrieved by men in frog men's gear. Uh, three such individuals were likewise arrested. The cocaine had, in fact, as I'm sure most of you suspect, been substituted with a sham substance. And um, which was, of course, uh, present in these bags at the time that the bags were actually dropped overboard. Seven individuals were arrested, as I've mentioned to you. I will not repeat their names than the materials that you have with you. I have to tell you, obviously, uh, before we get to your questions, that although it's a satisfying moment to, for the men and women who've taken part in this investiga investigation over such, such a short period of time, it also reminds us of the challenge that we have here in New York City and in, within this country that the men and women of these agencies have risen to, met in this in, to meet in this instance. Take the opportunity to commend these agents and the local authorities for doing what must be done if we are going to achieve any level of success at all in combating the serious elements involved in narcotic distribution and importation in this country. But law enforcement agents demonstrated an extraordinary degree of flexibility, imagination, and cooperation over a very, very short period of time. And it was that flexibility and their cooperation working together. Uh, I think we can say at this point that um, as a result of an ongoing investigation, we had information that led us in the direction of that boat and precipitated the search. Yes, sir. Of the people who were arrested, are they all just couriers? No, uh, uh, the feeling at this point, and the evidence is, will be a theory of kingpins, but we still feel very confident, and I think is that the information will demonstrate that what we have here are principles, people who had the immediate interest to underwrite the cost of this shipment, and who stood to gain the most by the eventual distribution throughout the United States. You've got seven arrests already, Mr. Derry. Is this the end of it, or do you expect more arrests to be occurring? No, the Presidential Task Force investigation, I can say, despite the activity today, has really just begun. Uh, seven have been arrested. It is likely, if not frankly inevitable, that more arrests will follow. Could you trace first the route of the ship and the shipment as you know it? Well, all I can tell you is Columbia, but perhaps Somebody from General here, you left where in Columbia? It was loaded in Columbia. All right. It was loaded in Columbia, destined for New York. Are they uh, uh, Columbia nationals, you see? The information we have now is that, is that yes, the, each one of them is a Colombian national. So they're illegal aliens? That's correct. This is a very tentative situation right now because, as you know, we're literally hours away from, from making the arrests. Which, one, which ones are the principal? I'm not going to characterize the individuals themselves, except at the present time with the information that you have, at the time of arraignment there may be further clarification because all of this is being worked out now. You know, sir, was this coke only destined for this area or was it expected to be, let's say, shipped and sent to other parts of the country and say, for distribution? We don't know. Mr. Gearing, what And we feel that it was, its impact will be felt in many ways, price-wise, uh, and others on the streets of New York. With these, with those. And his name, I think you have, but let me see if I, Mr. Hooker yes. was a member of the crew. The other end. I'm getting it now because of this bus. Yeah, I'm saying the price has gone up as of 4.30 this morning. To what? Well, percentage wise, just rub. Rub. You got a coin? <laughs> I don't know. The price has gone up because this happens to be a significant amount of cocaine of very high purity. Is, is there anybody here on the panel that was actually there for the, uh, that could describe the moment when we first saw it? Which moment? When it was first seized? Maybe the United States Customs. 
Well, I don't think there's anyone here that actually participated in the search itself. They're all home in bed where they belong. Offloaded, put it in the water. Frogmen were going to retrieve it. Presumably the frogmen would take it to another location. It would then be removed from the water, trucked or car to another location. Uh, and uh, business as usual from that point on. The frogmen were going to drag it through the water without alerting the guy that was on the ship. How did we uh, how did you make a switch? You, you made a switch some, at some point. How did you do it without, without the guy on board? Magic. Mr. Gary, uh, Mr. Gary uh, when the when Hudson Bay was searched, uh, was recognized that uh, these packets were not uh, and how and how was the switch made? I mean, we have to let me clarify something. These two suitcases you see here were seized and during the execution of one of several search warrants that took place simultaneously with the arrests. They were not on board the ship. These bags here were on board the ship. And they were the bags that were in fact on board the ship as it entered the waters in New York Harbor. Mr. Theory, could you tell us what day the switch was made or how long it took to make the switch? It's a very significant seizure. I recall one 600-pound seizure on Long Island a year or two ago. Um, the amount is very unusual um, and significant. And I don't know how else I could attempt to respond to your question. Except I think we want to avoid, how does it rank? In, in, how does it rank? Yeah. Right? What's the the biggest scale of to the best of my recollection, this seizure is exceeded only by the 610-pound seizure I'm sorry, I forgot to run. To the best of my recollection, this seizure is only exceeded in the New York area by the 610 pound seizure a little over a year ago. What's the average cocaine seizure? Is there an average size? Uh, I really don't think there are any average size. They run anywhere from a pound to 50 pounds to. There is no average size. Mr. Jensen, are these the boxes that the uh, drug was actually found in? No. Contained within those boxes are the original drugs that were seized from the Anadria. Contained within, uh, well, or at least there were three of them, are the substitute drugs. And then over here are the drugs that were seized from the apartment in Queens. The boxes the actual have the real drugs from the ship. The duffel bag has the substitute mm -hmm. drugs. That's correct. It's in the trash bag. Well, that was also inside other duffel bags. There were three duffel bags. That's real or fake? That's fake. It's from this original shipment, or is this in addition? No, it's in addition to the original shipment. Wow. You know where that came from? At this stage, no, although it was in their possession, so we assume it came from the same source. Well, we at this point, we're assuming they are illegal aliens, Colombian nationals. Um, we. Uh, Currently, there is some indication that one or two of them may have had prior arrests and convictions, but I can't confirm it, and I, don't, I have not been able to confirm it. Perhaps later in the day we'll, we'll be able to do it. Based upon the information that we had, and I mentioned a moment ago that this, this occurred as part of an investigation that was ongoing prior to Thanksgiving, we believe, and I think the information contained in the pleadings when they're filed will indicate that what we have here are principals, people who were in the business of importing and distributing cocaine. Mr. Terry, when did the ship arrive in New York Harbor? And give us a description of its size and the complement of the Here, the uh, <coughs> Thanksgiving evening, about 9.30. That's a freighter? That's a bulk sugar ship. Yeah, not as much sugar as coke, not as much coke as sugar, but. <laughs> Was so there a legitimate cargo? Yes, a legitimate cargo. Sugar, Brown sugar. sugar, yes. So really, it's only one crew member that, uh, that was involved in the, in the... We believe so, yes. This is going to be in the neighborhood of $44 million. Undoubtedly <laughs> less. <laughs> Thank you.
Non-narcotics. That you put there? That we replace the original narcotics with that is now contained in those boxes. Was that one of the original bags? Yes, there is. On the vessel, the original drugs were contained in both duffel bags and paint cans. Paint cans, like paint cans? Like paint cans, yes. We would prefer not to get into too many of those details for reasons in Queens. That is even more confusing. I'm sorry, did you or did you not make a switch on board? You made a switch with phony stuff. There was real situation in a very difficult circumstance. What's the difference between now and the way it used to be? Well, I don't know what would have happened before. Well, it proves that each agency has something separate and important to commit. And that's what the task force does. It recognizes the differences, but at the same time, it, it, it states how the enhanced value of a group effort. Anything else? The, act, the actual arrest, was this made by uh, agents in boats picking up the frogmen? Is that correct? Well, we had Coast Guard assistance out there at the time and how precise that's what that was. Wow, that problem. Yeah. 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 Y